In a slight deviation from the regular theme of this channel, this video explores a modern phenomenon unique to the age of the internet which has baffled the Western world for over 40 years. For as long as the average citizen has had the ability to broadcast his or her thoughts through online forums, people from Europe and the Americas have discovered that large segments of the population share specific memories which later proved to be unverifiable or untrue. In 2009, Paranormal author and researcher Fiona Broom dubbed this phenomenon the Mandela Effect, naming it after her own false memory that South African anti-apartheid activist Nelson Mandela died in prison in the 1980s. Some of those who have experienced this eerie phenomenon, learning for example that the logo of the underwear brand Fruit of the Loom never had the cornucopia they always remembered, or that the Monopoly man never wore a monocle as he does in their childhood memories have likened these unsettling revelations to the notion of waking up in a parallel universe nearly identical to the one they had previously inhabited, save for a few uncanny differences. In this video, we will explore seven examples of the Mandela Effect that will blow your mind. Number 7. Mirror Mirror on the Wall In 1937, Walt Disney Productions released the animated film Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs the first feature-length production of its kind, which inaugurated the company's undisputed 60-year reign as the world leader in animated motion pictures. An article for the Canadian Movie Review website, AprilFilms.ca, published on New Year's Day 2024, exactly three months prior to the publication of this video, rated one of this film's first acts as the 25th most memorable movie scene of all time. In this segment, the film's villain, a vain and wicked queen, consults an enchanted looking-glass in order to verify her status as the most beautiful woman in the kingdom, chanting, Mirror, mirror on the wall, who is the fairest of them all? Or does she? Although many who have seen the film clearly recall the queen saying precisely that mantra, a closer look at the scene reveals that the phrase used is, My queen. Magic mirror on the wall, who is the fairest one of all? Number 6. The Thunderbird Photo Legend has it that, ensconced in some dusty back issue of the Tombstone Epitaph, the magazine Treasure, or perhaps National Geographic, is a page bearing an old photo of a giant bird nailed to a barn wall. The wingspan of this avian colossus is put into special context by six men in 19th century attire, who stand equidistantly in the foreground, with their arms outstretched and their fingertips touching. An accompanying description identifies the winged monstrosity as a thunderbird, a huge raptor of Native American tradition, shot dead by a prospector in the Arizona desert. As my friend and fellow researcher Kevin Gould put it on his website thunderbirdphoto.com, if you think you've seen the picture described above, you're not alone. Going back more than 50 years, witnesses believe they've stumbled across this haunting image in newspapers, magazines, and books, even on TV or online although there are many fakes. Invariably, when they retrace their steps to locate the source of the photo, it's not there, like it's been wiped from the pages of history. Back in the summer of 2018, I interviewed a man named Frank Graves, who is supposed to have possessed a copy of this elusive photograph in 1966, taking it with him on an investigatory expedition into the wooded Allegheny Highlands beyond Renovo, Pennsylvania. He recalled that the bird in the photo resembled a giant raven, and that its head appeared to be slumped over. My documentary on this interview, incidentally, entitled Interview with a Cryptid Hunter, is now back on YouTube. Number 5. The Creepy Clown Sightings Thousands of people from the United States, Canada, and Europe share memories of a strange summer in the mid-2010s in which a succession of clown sightings swept across the Western world. For a spell of two or three months, scary-looking clowns, complete with white face paint and oversized shoes, were spotted with terrifying frequency in city parks, cemeteries, and school grounds across the country, alarming passers-by with their disturbing costumes and unsettling behavior. Some people even distinctly recall watching news coverage of the eerie phenomenon and reading articles on it in their local papers. To the relief of some and the horror of others, a perusal of the archives reveals that this frightening epidemic never actually took place. There's no way it didn't happen, wrote travel blogger Aprile Inganare, a native of Perugia, Italy, afflicted with this false memory. 
I remember it like it was yesterday. A clown with black balloons standing at the edge of the woods. Clowns chasing people at night through the piazza. They talked about it on the news. Is it all just a nightmare? A glitch in the matrix? Did we switch dimensions? Why do so many of us remember the same thing? Some have proposed that this collective false memory derives from the hype surrounding the release of the 2017 horror film It, based on Stephen King's 1986 novel of the same name, which revolves around a preternatural, sewer-going clown. Number 4. Lady Gaga's Meat Dress Another collective false memory involves an unusual choice of attire supposedly made by American pop star Lady Gaga. From Kentucky to Korea, thousands of people across the world have clear recollections of the self-styled Mother Monster accepting some award clad in a gown fashioned from raw meat sometime in the late 2000s. Although Gaga is famous for her eclectic wardrobe, the lifelong vegan has never donned the remembered meat dress, making a point to avoid wearing any sort of animal fabric, from leather to wool, in her performances. Some journalists have proposed that this confabulation is a conflation of two real images, an actual meat dress crafted by Canadian artist Janice Sturback in 1987, which was showcased in a widely publicized art exhibit in Ottawa, Ontario, and Lady Gaga's affectation of a lettuce leaf bikini, which she wore to a 2010 promotional event for the non-profit organization PETA, or People for the Ethical Treatment of Animals. Number 3. Custard's Last Stand One of the most defining events in the history of the American West, taught to school children throughout the United States, is the defeat of the U.S. Army's 7th Cavalry Regiment at the hands of Chief Sitting Bull's Lakota Sioux in the 1876 Battle of the Little Bighorn. Despite its prominence in American history, a shocking number of Americans misremember the name of the U.S. commander who made his famous hilltop stand at the climax of this bloody historical drama. Famed for his blonde frontier-style ringlets, which were shorn prior to his last campaign, General George A. Custard has what is perhaps the most misspelled surname in Wild West history, many Americans writing and pronouncing it without the terminal D. American psychologist Dr. Avril Prima addressed this strange phenomenon in her article for the 1981 issue of the Journal of Andorran Psychology, proposing that many people are hesitant to acknowledge the humorous connection between the almost legendary figure of Western history and the creamy dessert which his surname evokes. This unspoken insinuation, juxtaposed with the solemn nature of Custard's last stand, results in a sense of unease. In an instinctual effort to avoid this uncomfortable sensation, many Americans unconsciously choose to pronounce and spell the officer's surname without the D, leading to the widespread but erroneous usage of the name General Custer in popular culture. Number 2 the Nazgul Chase Scene The aforementioned review site, AprilFilms.ca, rates what it calls the Nazgul Chase Scene as the 41st most iconic movie scene of all time. This stroke of cinematic genius appears in the 2001 fantasy epic The Lord of the Rings, The Fellowship of the Ring, an adaptation of English writer J.R.R. Tolkien's classic 1954 novel of the same name. This particular scene is based on Book 1, Chapter 12 of Tolkien's novel, in which an elf named Glorfindel rescues the dying protagonist, the hobbit Frodo Baggins, from a band of preternatural assassins. Although director Peter Jackson took artistic liberties with this segment, substituting one of the key characters, some viewers vividly recall watching a scene more accordant with Tolkien's original narrative. Scottish actor Billy Boyd, who played the hobbit Pippin, explained in a recent video how he convinced director Peter Jackson to give his character the role originally intended for Frodo. The Nazgul chase scene. I know you probably think you remember it as you remember it, but um, actually, I was speaking to Peter Jackson and um, at the time, and we thought, well, who's the most charming of the hobbits? And we thought, well, it's Peregrine, isn't it? It's Peregrine Pippin Took. And so the Nazgul um, chase scene is actually Pippin. You probably remember it as Frodo, which, uh, you know, just shows the magic of Tolkien. But, um... Stranger still, our viewers' recollections of the writer who rescues Pippin. Although many cinephiles have vivid memories of Glorfindel swooping in to save the day, director Peter Jackson, in an avant-garde decision, 
gave the role of rescuer to one of the film's most iconic characters, Gollum. If you want him, come and play. Number 1. April Fool's Day People throughout the world have a misconception that on the first day of April, it is acceptable to prank one another by playing jokes and telling stories that are not true. Some people even believe that YouTubers sometimes engage in this shameful practice. If you'd like to learn more about this made-up custom, please check out the link in the description.